This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the employment of semi-active radar guided missiles in the MiG-21 DCS world. For the example, I'm loaded with R3R radar guided missiles, and I have an enemy 40 kilometers north of me. The first step is to set the weapon's mass remote into air-to-air -air in the upwards position, then set the missile type selector into the lower position for semi-active radar. We'll select our weapon type next. I'm using the inboard stations, in which I have the R3R loaded. Missiles can be fired from either the guns or launch position, so long as the fire mode selector is in the upwards position. Since missiles are fired from boresight in the MiG-21, it doesn't really matter if the ASP is in manual or automatic, so long as the boresight position is used, unless you leave the gun sight in guns mode, in which case you want to configure it for the target you're attacking. Here we're able to see that I have the MiG configured to fire semi-active radar missiles from the gun's position. In this example, I have target size dialed in for a Tiger II, and I have the ASP set in manual, set in the missile mode, which disables the horizontal axis of the gyro, which becomes fairly useless against a maneuvering target due to the fact it was slew off of the gun sight. When tracking a target with the radar, we're able to see the current range to target displayed as the two vertical lines tracking along the horizontal lines. The dynamic launch zone for the missile is the gap between the horizontal line and the boresight position. As the weapon selector is rotated to different stations carrying air-to-air -air missiles, the DLZ will be adjusted for the current weapon. The second scale from the bottom on the ranging scales below the ASP glass also displays range to target. When within parameters fire, we see the launch light and missile head ready lights displayed on the radar, Holding weapons release will release the weapon. When employing semi-active radar homing missiles, you must retain an active lock to the target for the duration of the missile's flight. If the lock is broken, the missile will lose its guidance, essentially becoming an unguided rock. At this point, we'll see the example in full. I'm starting to detect spikes off to my 10 o'clock, so I turn in on them and activate my radar, and I'm able to see a contact at about the limit of my radar range. At this point, I'll hold target lock and fly into the target, and the radar will automatically acquire the target when within range. At this point, I simply need to close the distance to fire. The max range of an R3R radar guided missile is roughly about 8 to 10 kilometers, generally effective within 6. To make up for shortcomings in the missile, I'll increase speed to impart as much speed on the missile at time of release as I can. As the range to target enters the dynamic launch zone, I'll hold weapons release to fire the missile. Rather than holding weapons release until both missiles are away, I let off so that I can judge if I need to fire a second one. At this point, I figure the first one may miss, so I fire the second one, leading ahead of the target, though we're able to see that the first one does in fact strike the target. The R3R is really the only effective missile the MiG-21 has for high aspect shots. At this point, we'll look into TAC view and we're able to see the R3R tracking towards the target too. The Tiger evades, although the missile makes a perfect intercept. Though this is often not the case, as the R3R is quite susceptible to chaff, as we'll see in this next example. As I launch my missiles, the Tiger evades, much as he did in the first example. This time we're able to see as the missiles are countered by the chaff countermeasures that he deploys. The missile is also quite incapable of pulling high-G maneuvers, as we're able to see this fighter simply makes a dive to defeat it. The radar guided missile's effectiveness compared to that of the IR guided missiles is debatable, although they are capable of high aspect shots.